be because of uh, even or odd parity. Okay, so let's uh, let's work on the right hand side. So you know, we're, we're, we're dealing with this part. So for x greater than zero. Now uh, here's our general solution. Now uh, if x is positive, we're on the right hand side there, uh, let's assume uh, wait a minute, alpha and beta are positive, right? Is that uh, let's see. Let's, see our let's assume our energy is positive, so alpha be positive. Now we're assuming E is less than V, right? For this part of the problem. So that makes that makes beta positive. Right? So alpha and beta are positive. Now if beta is positive and x is positive, as x goes to infinity, as you, you know, as you go out this way to, to infinity, this value here is going to blow up. It, it will go to infinity, right? Because these are both positive. And x goes to uh, plus infinity, uh, the exponential will go plus infinity as well. All right? So therefore, uh, to kill that, you know, that's not physical. You know, we, don't, we don't want infinities in physics. <laughs> I can tell them. You, you wait till we get quantum field theory. <laughs> what I've just, you'll appreciate the humor in what I've just said about we don't want infinities in physics. Okay. Now, I'm jumping ahead a couple of courses. Right. Uh, okay, so we don't want this. We don't want this to blow up, so we make d zero, right? That's, uh, we, can't, we can't have d uh, being non-zero because we, we get these infinities. You would go off to infinity, right? So, so e to the bx here would go to infinity as x goes to infinity. So, you know, so re make d zero, reject that. All right, so we're left, we're left with this. Now, uh, for equation one that we've done before, uh, remember u takes the form of uh, uh, a a sine plus b cos that, that that sort of form, right? Now uh, now let's let's deal with a case of even parity, right? So we're getting all these subcases now. So one uh, one case is when e is less than v naught. Uh, another case is uh, even parity. You, know, you can do it for odd parity. So we're getting all these subcases. All right. Now, for even parity, uh, you had a sine plus b cos. So you want the sine you want the sine part to uh, disappear because uh, sine is an odd function. Sine of minus x is minus sine of x. So we're talking even parity. So let's get rid of the sine. So you've got a sine plus b cos. So let's make so make a zero. So that uh, leaves you with b cos. That's an even function. That's what you want because we're now dealing with even solutions, right? To, to you. So now, now we've got. Uh, so we're left now with uh, u is b cos. Well, alpha x, right? In 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 this region. So between naught and a. So we're we're talking about from here to here, right? And in that region, uh, the solution u, your wave function is of the form b cos alpha x, right? Now, uh, we've also got, um, you know, this, this is for uh, x greater than a, right? So in this, this region here, we have u is of the form, where is it here? b cos alpha x, okay? Uh, Sorry, here. Sorry, here. This one. Okay. Now, so we have we have a solution here in the, of this form, valid in this region. Okay, and we have another solution here that's valid in this region. Now, remember, uh, you know, we've done this now. This is now the third time we've been doing this. Um, you impose your uh, restrictions, your conditions on your wave function. Uh, single-valued, uh, normalizable, and continuity in uh, the wave function itself, and continuity or smoothness uh, in the first derivative of the wave function. Okay, those those conditions. All right. Um, well, let's so let's do continuity 
So the value of the wave function here at, at x equals a must equal the value of the second solution in, in this region. Those two have to be equal at, at uh, x equals a. So, so you don't get sudden jumps, right? The, value, the values meet. They're the same value at, at that boundary, at, at x equals a. Therefore, uh, let's see, these, these two solutions here, they have to equal each other when x equals a, right? So, so therefore you get b cos alpha a, there it is, equals this, c e to the minus b a, right? So that's, that's where the two wave functions are equal. Now let's take the first differential, so du by dx, and those, uh, those two gradients have to be equal. Um, so it's not enough just that they, uh, the two values the two wave functions are equal. I mean, they might be like this. They have different gradients. But that means you get a sudden jerk in the gradient. You don't want that. That's not very physical either. So you, you want the gradients to sort of be the same. Right? So, uh, okay, so differentiate both, so both of these. So you, you'll get uh, minus b sine alpha x and an alpha as well. So that's where this comes from. And uh, differentiate this with respect to x and you'll get minus minus uh, beta c whatever, okay? Uh, do, do, do that for homework. All right, now uh, take this equation here and divide by this one. So the b's cancel, the c's cancel, the exponentials disappear, and you end up with getting just tangent tan of alpha a is equal to b over a, right? b over a. So call that, call that equation 3. So, uh, so tangent of alpha a equals beta over alpha. Right? Now, uh, so we've deduced, we've deduced that much. Okay. Now, uh, if you take another, a different subcase when uh, the, the parity is now odd, because we, we did here uh, parity where we're for even, for even parity. So if you do it for odd parity, uh, your, your, your what's your wave function that, that has odd parity? Uh, now u is the general form. Remember, a sine plus b cos. Now you want um, now now you're doing the odd parity case, so you want u to be an odd function. So that means you have to kill off the even function, and that's the cos because cos is an even function. So you want the b to be zero. Um, Okay, so that leaves you with a co uh, a sine, yeah, a sine something, right? So you do a similar analysis to here, and I'll ask you to do this for homework. And ask, uh, asking you, especially this part here, asking you to do quite a bit of homework. Uh, yeah, it's getting it's getting tougher, right? It's uh, yeah, it's a senior level course. So uh, you yeah, do do a similar analysis, and you'll end up uh, with something equivalent to this. Uh, this is equation 3, and you'll end up with equation 4 for the odd parity case, and it'll be cotangent, cot alpha a equals minus beta over alpha. Right? Just, just do the, a similar analysis to here. You know, impose these two conditions, and you'll get, you'll get this. Right? Uh, okay, so what? what? What can we do with that? Now these, so we have these two constraints, uh, equation 4 and equation 3. Now these constraints put restrictions on the value of the energy E that you can have. I've right? uh, done this kind of thing before. Uh, these uh, constraints on on uh, on your wave function, on your U, your single valued, uh, normalizable, blah blah blah, you know, all those conditions, they force uh, to to a large extent the um, the well, they in a sense force the discretization, the quantization of the energy, right? They, right? So, uh, so what we need to do now? Let, let's let's. So we've got we've got these two equations we can solve. Let's uh, let's concentrate on. We'll just do one example here. Uh, we'll do equation four, which is this one. Now, uh, start thinking about this a, a little. You've got you've got two values. You've got this cot alpha a on on the left side, and you've got minus beta over alpha on the right hand side. Now, 
both of these two uh, values, both of them depend on uh, the energy. Right? So, uh, well, a is, a is a constant. That's just the size, the size of your your region. That, that's just a constant. That's a given, right? So that doesn't vary. But alpha, what's alpha? Alpha, alpha. Alpha's here. Uh, alpha square root of two me. Now, alpha. Uh, so h h bar is a constant. M is a constant. Um, but e e can change. E is a variable. It can vary. It's a variable. Okay. So that means a is Alpha, sorry, alpha is a variable, right? So alpha depends on E. Alpha is a function of the energy. Alpha is a function of E. And a, you know, a V naught's a constant, H bar is a constant, M is a constant, but E can vary, E is a variable. So beta here, also a variable. Beta is a function of the energy, okay? So alpha and beta are both variables of the energy, okay? Now here, here you've got an alpha here. So you could, uh, draw a graph of this where, uh, let's see, you could have your energy along the horizontal axis and your this value, say the vertical axis, and for differing values of E, uh, you could draw two graphs. You could draw uh, this along the, the vertical axis versus E, E this way, and similarly you draw a second graph uh, of uh, 